Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to install and configure my SQL database on your local machine and how you can start working with it. So first, let's talk about a database. A database is a collection of information that is structured in such a way that it is easy to manage and update. And to make the management and updating of a database easier, we have what we call database management systems. We have several of them. We have the MySQL, which we are talking about in this video. We have Microsoft SQL Server, we have Postgre, we have MongoDB, and the host of others. For Microsoft SQL Server, the advantage is that it is fast, easy, and reliable, can actually be used for both large and small applications, can provide high scalability, and it is one of the most famous open source solution relational database management system. It stores table data in tables and allow you to perform what we call crude operation. So crude operation means you can create, you can read file, you can update, and you can also actually delete. Uh, you're going to find out later that actually MySQL is being managed by Oracle. All right. So let us go ahead. How do we download this? How do we install and configure it? I'm going to navigate back to my browser now to download. I'm on my browser right now and I can just type my SQL download. When I type that, it's going to take me to this page right here. I can see my SQL downloads. And right, I'm on the download page. In case you land on the mysql.com page, just click on the download page and you scroll down. You will see the enterprise edition and the cluster. These guys are paid version. So just go ahead to the community version, which is the one right here and click i'm using windows so i'm i'm going to install it for windows microsoft uh, not microsoft now you can see it's by oracle all right i'm going to click my sql installer for windows and i have to select the version so i have downloaded this version here what this means is you can see the file difference is so the file size difference is so much the 2.3 we download an installer but when you are done configuring it, you will have to now download from online all the settings and the applications. However, the installer here, the one with the higher size, will download everything. So you can install it offline. It's more or less the offline installer while the first one is the online. So just click on download and proceed. For me, I've downloaded it and I'm just going to switch back to it now and start running the settings. So I have it on my desktop, which is what I have right there. I'm going to double click to commence installation. Click on yes. All right. So it's going to come up with this page developer default, and these are the things that it will install by default if you select the option. I don't need much of all this. I don't need the Java, the you know other kind of connectors. I don't need some things here. So I'm gonna have to just go to custom so that I can define exactly what I need. So I'm going to click next, and right here I have to define what I need across this. Uh, Categories, servers, applications, connectors, and documentation. For servers, I'm going to just go to here and select the latest one. This guy, I'm going to move it there. For application, I need Workbench, which is the GUI for working with it. So I'm going to connect with this. So Workbench is the GUI for working with my SQL Server, just the way we have Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio for working with um, Microsoft SQL Server. We have um, other applications to work with other form of databases so this is the ui for this uh, visual studio i don't need this the shell do I actually need the shell to run some commands i do so i'm going to click here as well select this router do i need router i don't i let just select it because you might want to later you know have something to do that you need it for connector i just need odbc that's all i need ODBC, let me check the version here, 64 bits. I'm making sure I'm selecting the one that matches my system, 64 bits. And what other connector here? Nope, I don't need another one. But documentation is important. You just want to know more. And uh, you have support guide right here. So I'm going to click on this documentation, move it. And also for sample, you know, data. So I, need, I also need that too. All right. So click on this and move it. Then click next. So showing that, okay, it's going to install on this part. This part already exists, so I might want to override it. It's installing these two major guys. Yep, I'm going to click next. Um, are you sure you want to continue? Yes. 
so it's ready to install if you install if you use the first version it's going to just uh download right now not install but it's going to install download before installing but because this is an offline installer i can just click on execute and you see it installing so i'm going to put this video on pause it could take a couple of minutes so when we are done we'll come back actually it took quite some minutes you know for it to get done but we are done now so i can click next and it's about product configuration i have to configure these three both server router and samples and examples too so when I click next, leave it as it is right now. Um, this is going to be the default port TCP that we'll be using for other connections. Click next. I'm going to use strong password. So we will set up our password shortly. Click next. So um, root password, I have to root account password, set something. Okay, click check. All right um it should bring up for root account I've, I've i've stored that please remember to store this password somewhere which i've done leave these settings as it is you're going to execute this it may ask you instead of asking me to type a password they might even ask you to create a user or to do some password settings you should create your password there i'm going to click on finish it brings me back here i'm going to click next uh, here you're going to leave this i don't need to set up the router so just click on finish and click next and right here is asking me to test so prior to this don't forget prior to this it could have asked you to set up your password instead of asking me to type in my password it could ask you to set up your admin password and type it twice you can even have the option of creating a user you might not want to create a user okay the password right here to test if my configuration is right now so i'm going to test it here I'm going to click on check. All right, so connections are seeded. I'm going to click next and I'm going to execute right there. Fantastic. I'm going to click finish. So all this is done. Click next. I can copy the details to my clipboard, then click finish. It's going to run this my shell. After running some query, it's going to bring up right now. Uh, workbench my sql workbench which is what you can see right on the screen and this is the root directory and that is where you know that that is the server that i have if you have more than one instance you're going to see them all listed here or you can create another connection right here i'm not creating connection this is the host name we'll talk about this later so i'm just going to click on this and it might ask you for password again it might ask you for password so you put in that same password you have set you put that you put that there and by default, it might take you to administration right here. I'm wondering where, is it, where do I go to? Just click on this schema. And because we have installed sample data, so you're going to see this guy that we have here, including Sakila. When I open Sakila, you're going to see the tables. I open the table. You can see the tables on the table. I can right click here and say select top 100. And right here, we have them. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to connect Microsoft Power BI to this database. I mean, that is the main goal. How you can simulate that experience in workplace while you are still learning on your own. Thank you and bye.